Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Marshall. Welcome to Tumble, the show where we explore stories of science discovery. Today, we're exploring the world of spider music. (laughs) Spider music? Is this music made by spiders or for spiders or both? (laughs) It's sort of a yes and answer. We're going to weave a web of connections between science and music and find out what spiders can teach us about how to make material. Okay, we're starting the show with musical spiders. I'll warn you, the music is a bit creepy, but listen as closely as you can. All right, all right, uh, here we go, pressing play. Uh. <laughs> all right, uh, this is pretty, pretty out there, pretty out there stuff. I think you're not wrong about it being creepy, though. But so how is this made by a spider? Well, it's not something that you'll hear a spider make when you're out in nature. But it is something that you can see spiders make, turned into music through computers. It's a spider web. Oh, yeah. Well, that makes perfect sense. This sounds very much like the experience of, like, when you walk through a spider web and it gets in your face and stuff. (laughs) Or it's like the background music to a movie about spiders. (laughs) Just like a romantic comedy. (laughs) (laughs) Or maybe in the spider world, this is like what their hit music sounds like. (laughs) All the spiders in the web are getting down to this. So let's meet the human behind the spider music. He's a material scientist named Marcus Bueller. My research deals with materials. I study how materials are made. So, I mean, I guess I don't really think of it that way when I'm sweeping spider webs out from uh, the floorboards, but I guess it's a material? It is, along with everything else that everything is made of. Materials are everywhere, and in fact, you don't really think about it usually. Materials make up everything that you're looking at. You know, I look around and I see materials everywhere, so I have to force myself not to see them. (laughs) Yeah, I guess, like, now that you mention it, I'm surrounded by probably hundreds of different materials. Like, there's this little ceramic coffee cup on my desk, there's this pile of papers, there's the computer, which is made out of, like, a lot of things. Plastic, metal, I don't know. Yeah, it's sort of overwhelming to think about all the materials that surround us at all times. That's why Marcus focuses on just a few materials. And he started studying spider silk because it's exceptionally strong while being very thin. It's actually five times stronger than steel. That's an incredible material. Wow, I mean, that is an incredible material. Yeah, and we're just talking about the strings of the silk. When they're woven into a web, it creates a whole new set of questions about the material. Are the questions like, do they use them to catch their food? Because I think I know the answer to that. Yes, they use the web to catch food, but it's also a way for spiders to sense the world around them. They kind of hear through the web. Spiders have very poor vision, and also they don't have ears like we do. You know, they don't hear kind of like the frequencies we do. Instead, spiders have very fine hairs on their legs and bodies. So these hairy structures are kind of sensors for them. They're their ears, basically. Wow. Hair as ears. (laughs) Not literal ears. Could we learn to use our hair as ears? No. Hair for spiders does the job that our ears do for us. But they don't hear anything like sound. They have to be connected to a medium. And the spider web is the medium that they use to connect to the world. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. I, I think this might be the most mind-blowing fact for me of the season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sense vibrations. And those vibrations let them know where to find the prey that's stuck in their web. If there are other spiders in their web, they communicate through the web itself. And the web gives them the news from the outside world, too. They're going to sense somebody's walking towards the web, or maybe there's an animal coming, there's wind coming, it's raining. I mean, they're going to sense all of these things. And this is, I think, the fascination that we all have is kind of figuring out how does this work and why is that? 
To answer these questions, Marcus has studied a lot of different spiders and lots of different kinds of webs, from the classic Halloween web to more complicated funnel webs, sheet webs, and tangle webs. I didn't know that there were so many types of webs out there. But, you know, there's lots of questions about the material of a spider web, but where does the music come in? Yeah, that's where it gets creatively interesting. (laughs) All right. We'll find out how the art of music and the science of materials combine right after this quick break. Okay, so we've already learned about why Marcus studies spider webs, and now we're going to find out how and why he makes weird music from them. So Marcus is a scientist, but he's also a musician. I've actually been interested in the, you know, the, in the music side of things for a long time. Marcus grew up listening to lots of music and wondering how songs were made, just like he wondered how materials are made. And he found a lot of similarities between them. You know, the way we think about music is really construction, kind of like materials are made from atoms and molecules. Music is also made from, from notes. It's obvious, you know, everybody can see in a score, you see individual notes, different instruments, they sound different. So he's sort of saying that, like, musical notes and instruments are like the atoms and the molecules of a song in the way that atoms and molecules make up a material? Exactly. Well, that's really interesting. So just as Marcus saw the world as a huge collection of materials, he also saw materials as a score for music. Instead of using a string to make sounds, I can take a look at a single chemical bond and pluck that. That's a really interesting idea. Like, what would that sound like? And where does the actual sound come in? If you think about a spider web, and you want to make it into a music instrument, you can't actually take the real web. I mean, you can take a real spider web and pluck it, but you don't hear anything. <laughs> yeah, I've done that by mistake on many hikes. <laughs> Sometimes with my mouth. <laughs> Ew. And it's true, you don't hear anything. You just get a lot of gross spider web in your mouth. <laughs> Here's how it actually works. So what you really need to do, you need to kind of translate this web into a computer model, like a computer game. So Marcus brought spiders into his lab and waited for the spiders to build these beautiful, complex, three-dimensional webs. Then they scanned the webs with special equipment, recreating each string from the spider silk inside of the computer. Now in my virtual world, I can actually go in there virtually and I can plug on a string. It's a spider web string. It's the actual spider web model, but it lives in my computer. Now I can actually simulate how this web would vibrate. Also, it's kind of like like the spider web version of Minecraft. Exactly. So to play the web, Marcus programmed rules for what each string would sound like. He assigned different frequencies to the string that depend on how long each one is. The tone you hear is actually controlled by the, the length of the string. The string sounds also change depending on how they connect to other parts of the web. So you're going to hear higher pitches or lower pitches depending on the, the local geometry of the, of the connections. When all the strings of the web are vibrated or plucked, it's as if the spider has spun a completely unique song. So like, are any of the spider songs hits? <laughs> are they climbing the charts? <laughs> We do not know what the spider musical charge or the spider web (laughs) charge, although I'm sure you can make a lot of puns out of that. I'm sure in spider world, they're like, ooh, Esmeralda, you've made a wonderful web. She always does the best. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what Marcus has created is called a sonification. He's turned data from the web into sound. And that's what we heard at the beginning of this episode. So let's listen to it again. This time with Marcus as a guide to understand what it is that we're actually listening to. We're traveling through the spider web and we're going to hear, we're going to basically listen to the vibrations 
there's a video that goes along with the audio where you can see the strings of the web emerge with the sounds of the music. Every time a new sound comes in, like a bing sound, a um, new segment of this web, of this graph, comes into view, and you're going to hear that being played. So you go travel through. When the sound gets a little bit more quiet, like right now, it means there are fewer strings, fewer connections visible at that point. It gets less busy. Well, that's all really neat, but honestly, I can't really see it climbing the charts this year. <laughs> <laughs> that's a valid point. But the spider doesn't care how you feel about its music. The spider, of course, has no interest in making music that sounds like Beethoven or Bach. I think that's very obviously true. Um, spiders would definitely have their own ideas of what good music sounds like that might be nothing like ours, especially since they don't have ears, <laughs> as I just learned. <laughs> yeah, this is why spiders never invite us over to hang out and listen to records. <laughs> <laughs> to them, it's just like, hmm. <laughs> So I can see how this makes like really interesting art, but does sonifying spider webs have anything at all to do with science or is it just like cool? <laughs> well, Marcus told me that listening to spider webs has helped him understand them scientifically. One of the things we've learned by creating this instrument and by spending a lot of time sonifying it, moving around, understanding the, the sound patterns, we've identified interesting regions in the spider web. These interesting regions are the puzzles that Marcus wants to unravel in his work with materials. They're places where the spider's weaving seems completely random, and Marcus is trying to find the hidden patterns within it. Sort of like like hidden picture drawing or one of those magic eye things where you have to like see the dolphin or something? Yes. The 3D webs Marcus studies are so dense or like sort of thickly woven together, it's impossible to see every string with your eyes. It's actually easier to hear them. Our brain is very good in listening and capturing kind of patterns and in that information. So that helped us understand the spider web structure. Once Marcus understands how spider webs are built, he can build his own and make brand new types of materials that copy the qualities of spider webs. Oh, wow. So, like, he could create some totally new building material that vibrates like a spider web so we know when our friends are climbing on our walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have no idea what these materials would look like, but it shows how much creative thinking is required in science. From imagining these new materials to creating music to turning the music back into more research. I think it's pretty crazy that you could use spiders to make, like, your backing band. <laughs> yes, that's actually what Marcus did. So he's a musician in his free time, too, and he turned these spider sounds into an instrument that he uses in this song called Spider Variations. Let's have the song end the episode and listen closely to see if you can hear the spiders. Now that you've learned how Marcus studies materials, think of a material that's interesting to you. It could be natural, like wood or leaves or something, or it could be man-made, like plastic. Think of all the properties or characteristics of the material that you can observe. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Is it heavy or light? Think about it from every angle, using all of your senses. What questions do you have about why this material is the way it is? Send them to us. We'd love to see it. Thanks to Dr. Marcus Bueller, McAfee Professor of Engineering at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The recordings are used with his permission, and you can read the full credits in the podcast description. Hear more from Marcus about materials and music in our bonus interview episode, available when you support us on Patreon for just $1 or more a month on patreon.com slash tumblepodcast. 
you can watch Marcus's spider music videos and explore the world of webs on the blog on our website at sciencepodcastforkids.com. Sarah Robertson Lentz is our editor and designed the episode art. Elliot Hijaj is our production assistant. Gary Calhoun James engineered and mixed this episode. I'm Lindsay Patterson, and I wrote this episode. And I'm Marshall Escamilla, and I made all of the music and sound design for this episode. Tumble is a production of Tumble Media. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more stories of science discovery. Science discovery.